Hey, what's up everybody? Game Dad here, coming at you with part two, showcasing the second half of my current Xbox collection. So, let's check it out. Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition was released in 2005 by Rockstar Games and is one of my all-time favorite car games. The customization available for the player for upgrading cars is vast and is a ton of fun to collect resources for. MotoGP was released by THQ in 2002 and was an excellent start to the MotoGP franchise. It is a realistic motorcycle game allowing multiple options for players including training to learn how to play the game and even do some basic tricks. It has excellent physics and will definitely put your skills to the test. NBA Streets V3 was released by EA Sports Big in 2005 and is a continuation of the NBA Streets series. I've never been a huge basketball fan, but the game was fun for what it was. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this game, but that's just because I don't really have any personal interest in it. Next up is NCAA Football 2005, released by EA Sports in 2005. In this game you get to play as the top college football teams of the time. This game to me plays just like any other Madden style football game. Choose your team, play the game, repeat. Oddworld Munch's Odyssey was released by Infogrames in 2001 and is actually the very first game I ever played on an Xbox and I've loved the franchise ever since. The game is colorful, animated, and has just the right amount of collectible action going on. I had a blast playing this game again to capture footage for this video. Oddworld Stranger's Wrath was released by EA Games in 2005 and takes a new approach to Oddworld gameplay, making this game more of a shooter than an action platformer. It wasn't my favorite in the franchise, but it was still fun to play. Fun fact, all of these Oddworld games are actually available as full ports on mobile devices now. Pac-Man World 2 was released by Namco in 2002 and is a mediocre game at best. There are quite a few of these open world style 3D Pac-Man games, but I am just not a fan. The gameplay and look of the games are very generic and makes the game feel like a bargain bin 3D platformer. Project Gotham Racing 2 was released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2005 and takes everything that worked from the first entry and improves upon it. The game has excellent graphics that actually hold it pretty well today, and the racing is fluid and easy to control, and the game overall is a lot of fun. Rayman Arena was released by Ubisoft in 2002 and is more of a minigame style entry in the franchise in my opinion. It doesn't take the same side-scrolling approach that the other games have taken in the past, but that's not a bad thing. I still had a lot of fun playing this game, and if you're a fan of Rayman in general, you will probably like this game. Shrek was released by TDK in 2001 and is based on the movie of the same name. Overall, the game felt really dark to me, which was an interesting contrast to the movie. I didn't really care for the clunky controls, and it wasn't very intuitive. Shrek 2 was released by Activision in 2004 and is a much better entry than the first one in my opinion. The game is more vibrant, has much more intuitive controls, and even the camera angle is much better. Spawn Armageddon was released by Namco in 2003 and is a pretty fun entry in the series. It's an action style game and is pretty common in its overall format, but it was still fun to play as Spawn and uses chains to take out enemies. Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast was released in 2002 by LucasArts and is your typical Star Wars action game. You've got a lightsaber, you've got some force powers, and you've got a story to complete. That's a simple description, but the game is actually a lot of fun. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic was released by LucasArts in 2003 and is one of two of my all-time favorite Star Wars games. I absolutely loved this game when it came out, and even with the game glitches that it has, the game is still insanely fun. With it being an RPG, that just added endless hours of fun to the overall gameplay. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords was released by LucasArts in 2004 and is my other favorite Star Wars game. This game picks up right where the first one left off and keeps going on with the same winning formula. I had a blast playing this game and just wished there was even more of it to play. Star Wars Obi-Wan was released by LucasArts in 2001 and is a classic Star Wars game where you get awesome lightsaber play and you also get to go through the game on an exciting new adventure playing as Obi-Wan. Star Wars Republic Commando was released in 2005 by LucasArts and is a pretty fun entry in the franchise. While I'm no longer that big a fan of FPS style games, this is still a fun entry and follows the genre quite well. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six 3 was released by Ubisoft in 2003 and is your typical Battlefield or Call of Duty style military game. The game is fun, but it is just another game in a sea of them in this genre. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Three Black Arrow is a continuation of the Rainbow Six Three game and was released by Ubisoft in 2004. It definitely feels like nothing more than an expansion and is simply a lot more of the same. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Chaos Theory was released by Ubisoft in 2005 and is a truly great game. Before Splinter Cell, there were definitely stealth style games, but not to this extent. The entire object of the game is to never be seen or have anyone know what you were doing. 
Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 was released by Activision 02 in 2001 and is a great continuation of the series both graphically and control-wise. There are new tricks, new locations, new skaters, and much more. This game is a lot of fun and I'm glad I have it in my collection. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 was released by Activision 02 in 2002 and in my opinion is one of the best in the franchise. Everything was revamped to make this game look and play great and I had a blast playing this game again for this video. Top Spin was released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2003 and is a realistic style tennis game with some special additives. The game plays exactly as you would expect a tennis game to play and is pretty fun. It's no Mario Tennis, but it is a fun game nonetheless. Turok Evolution was released in 2002 by Acclaim and is a great continuation of the franchise. I had a lot of fun playing through this game, hunting down enemies and shooting some dinosaurs along the way. Ultra Bust Move was released in 2004 by Majesco and has the same underlying gameplay as any Bust Move game. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get my Xbox to read the disc. Unreal 2 The Awakening was released by Atari in 2004 and is your typical alien style shooter game. The story is okay, but the real appeal of this franchise is most definitely the multiplayer. Unreal Championship was released by Infogrames in 2002 and is definitely where it's at when it comes to playing an Unreal game. The multiplayer of this game franchise is excellent and the Unreal Engine is the backbone of some of the greatest games to ever be released. Now that is every game that I currently have in my Xbox collection. Now, do you guys know of any games that I should definitely add to the collection? Let me know down in the comments below. Please also hit those like and subscribe buttons and also hit the notification bell to get alerted anytime I got a new video coming out. Now, as always, I'm GameDad. I thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you later.